Factorio is a game about building poorly designed bases to eventually launch a rocket ship into space, but it's also a game about teaching you how to learn RxJS. So that's not exactly true, but the conveyor belts and various contraptions in Factorio are a pretty decent analogy for the observable streams and operators in RxJS. So it's not a perfect analogy, and I'll try to explain why as we go, but it might help you to understand some reactive or declarative programming concepts. So I've set up a couple of little examples that we are going to go check out. And this first one here is going to be a simple example of an observable stream. So if you are an Angular developer, you have probably used the HTTP client to make a, a get request or a post request or something like that. And that's going to re return an observable to you that you need to subscribe to. Now, for a lot of people, this might be the only experience they have with observables. So it might be a bit difficult to understand what an observable is even doing here. So in this analogy, this conveyor belt here is going to represent an observable stream and items that are going to travel along this conveyor belt will represent individual data emissions from that stream. And I've set up this little robot arm at the end here, which is going to take data off of the stream and put it into this box. And this is going to represent subscribing to this stream to pull data out of it as it comes down the stream. So in the case of our HTTP request, what is going to happen is we are going to make the get or post request and it's going to return some data for us. So that data is going to travel down this stream. We're subscribing to the stream to pull the data back out. And then we have our item in this box, which we can now do something with. Now, this is uh, one example of where this analogy isn't perfect because uh, we wouldn't have data slowly traveling down a stream like that to be picked up by our subscribe. This would all happen instantly. As soon as that item got put on the stream, it would have been immediately picked up by our subscribe. But this does help to visualize what's actually happening. Now, in the case of the HTTP client, it only ever emits one bit of data. So as soon as we subscribe to it, we pull that data out, this whole observable stream is going to be completed and this whole system is going to get torn down, which seems like a lot of work just for emitting one item. There probably isn't really any specific benefit that we can see here over just using something like a promise, which could handle an asynchronous request to a server or something like that. So now as it's coming into nighttime, I'm realizing I probably should have set up some lights or something like that, but I think we could still see this just fine. So what we're gonna do now is take a look at something that is a bit more useful uh, in the case of observables, and that's streams that emit multiple bits of data over time. So I stopped putting uh, data onto this stream in the first example, but we can just let it keep going. And it's just going to continually place data into this stream and our subscribe statement is going to continuously pick it up and uh, do whatever we want with it afterwards. So this is just going to keep on going like this. And like I said with the last example, this isn't a perfect analogy because it wouldn't be slow like this. The instant it's put on the stream, it would be picked up by our subscribe statement. But again, this can help us visualize what is happening. And so the example we're looking at here is a bit more like using the value changes observable from Angular's reactive forms. So what the value changes observable will do is every time that a value is changed in a form, it is going to uh, put that data onto the stream. And if we're subscribed to value changes, every time there's a data change, we're going to be notified and we're going to be able to do something with that data. So we might just want to do something like uh, just be notified that it's happened and maybe we want to trigger some kind of form save method or maybe we do want to take this specific data and do something with it. So perhaps in that example, it's a bit easier to see how an observable might be useful in situations where data is being emitted over time. But this is still a relatively simple example. We can do a lot more advanced and cool things with RxJS. What we were doing over here could be described as imperative style programming. We're just pulling data off of the stream by subscribing to it. And then we're going to manually do something with that item. But we can also code in a reactive or declarative style with RxJS. And what that's going to look like is a bit more like what we're seeing on screen here. 
So I'm going to run you through an example of using combine latest, which is a creation operator. And so what it's going to do basically is take multiple streams and it's going to combine it into a new stream for us. Now there are also some big problems with this analogy, but let's go with it for now and I will explain what they are. So in this case, what we're doing is using this furnace here to represent our combine latest operator. And the idea of the combine latest operator is that it's going to take the latest values from multiple streams and then it is going to do something and it's going to emit a new stream that we could then subscribe to if we wanted to. So for our Factorio example, this is a furnace. So what we could do is we could combine a stream of coal and a stream of ores, say uh, iron ore, which we have in our chest right now. So it's gonna combine those two streams together and it's going to create a new stream of iron plates, which is what we get when we burn the uh, ores in the furnace with the coal. So let's just see what that looks like. We'll switch that arm on and this one as well. So the coal is being placed onto the stream and it's being put into the furnace, which is our combined latest. And the ores are also being put into the combined latest furnace here. And what we get out as a result is these iron plates, which is a completely new stream with new data items on it. And now we are also subscribing to this stream to get the new values. So what we could have done is we could have just subscribed to both of these streams individually. We could have got the iron ore out of this stream. We could have got the coal out of this stream. And then we could have manually put it into the furnace to make our iron plates. But then we have to deal with subscribing to do two different streams and managing those. And we get the same result in the end. Whereas we could just combine these streams into one to do all the work we needed. And it's this approach of combining multiple streams together to create the results we want, which is a more declarative or reactive style of programming. And a big benefit of the setup that we have here is that I could uh, say, instead of um, emitting iron ore, we could have some copper ore coming out of this stream. So this stream might emit multiple different types of values. And then we just have whatever type of logic we want set up in our combined latest. And then we're going to get whatever we want coming out of this stream as a result. So what this means is that if this uh, observable stream changes, our application will react to it and do what it needs to do in response to that, which is what makes it declarative. We're sort of just describing what we want rather than manually handling everything ourselves. So let's just run this example with the uh, copper ore instead. So we get the coal going again, get the copper ore coming out. And now instead of iron plates, we're going to get copper plates coming out onto this stream. So all we needed to change was the data source here and we get the new results automatically with no additional handling required. Now you can probably see my analogy breaking down a little bit here. We got coal stacking up and all sorts of stuff going on here. It's not really important for the lesson I'm trying to convey here, but this isn't a perfect analogy of combined latest. Uh, combined latest will take the latest values that are emitted from a stream or from multiple streams and combine them together. In this example, we're taking the, the latest or the, the earliest in a sense, because our, our data emissions are kind of stacking up here. And if we were taking the latest, we'd be taking the one at the end, not the ones at the front. But it's not a perfect analogy, but hopefully with this and the associated code samples, uh, this will paint a pretty good picture for explaining what it does. Now, I'm not sure if this kind of explanation is useful or not, so do let me know if you would like me to uh, continue this series and explore other things in RxJS. That is definitely something I could do. We could try play around with creating examples in Factorio of how, say, a switch map, a merge map, can cat map works. I'm not sure how far I could take this analogy, but I think we could have some fun with it and it might be uh, educational as well. So let me know if you do want to see that. And if you did like the video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.